Okay, so today I want to talk about energy availability. So this jug of green water, that represents all of the energy, all of the calories that I consume in a day. So that's all the food I eat and all the uh, fluids I drink that have calories in me, like milk and smoothies and juice, something like that. So that's all of my energy. So what does my energy do? Well, it goes into the body and it fills up the different tanks. So um, it fills up my training tank. I'm always gonna turn up to training maybe three, four times a week, uh, I'll arrive, I'll run up and down the pitch. So I'm going to be able to perform in matches. I'm first off the mark, I'm first to the ball, I'm putting in the best tackle, I'm jumping the highest to get the ball. It's going to positively affect my mood. So uh, that mood bucket is full, I'm feeling good, and that's positive both for my performance and for the rest of the squad, because I'm just a nicer person when I'm well fueled. It's affecting my reproduction. So as a woman, I have a period every month and my body says, yep, yeah, you could hypothetically, if you wanted, have a baby. So I've got a period every month. That's healthy reproductive system. It's fueling my bones. Whoa, a bit short. Um, it is fueling my bones. So it's keeping them nice and strong and preventing injuries. So muscular injuries as well. And it should also be um, protecting my heart. Let's fill that one up. So hopefully I have enough energy, enough in the eating enough, um, and I've got good heart health, good metabolism. So that's all hunky-dory. That's when I eat enough to fill all these buckets. But let's say I decide, maybe I've taken an ocean and I decide I'm going to reduce my calorie intake. So because I just feel like cutting out something. So I've decided I'm gonna cut out a food group like carbohydrates. Or maybe I have decided that dairy is bad for you and I replace it with plant-based alternatives and they don't have as many calories. Um, so maybe I um, just am a bit tired or yeah, overwhelmed, lazy, depends. Um, and I just haven't really got around to cooking, skipping the odd meal, not recovering after my training sessions, you know, different things like that. And, and that can get a lot. Maybe. I've taken a bit of a notion and I decided that I'm gonna actually do more training. So my food stays the same, but I'm going to do these extra training sessions that I haven't been prescribed by my SNC or fitness coach. Um, so suddenly there's not enough energy or fuel in this tank to fill all these cups. So what, what cups am I gonna fill first? Well, you might be surprised, but you will always fill the training cup first. No matter how low these other ones go, that training cup is gonna get filled. So you will always turn up to training. Um, have a performance well, what we might find is that actually that starts to dip. So suddenly you're not the first to the ball. Uh, maybe your sprints aren't as fast. Maybe your uh, kind of power output um, has reduced and you can't really tackle as well. Mood, so that one definitely um, depletes very quickly. So the term hangry, hungry and angry, um, we all know how that feels. So we're starting to feel uh, maybe less motivated to train and um, just maybe conflicting um, feelings and maybe a bit more negative altogether. Reproduction, so that one depletes pretty quickly. So um, you maybe stop getting periods. So if we're not eating enough food, our body straight away says, you do not have enough energy to hypothetically get pregnant. So no periods, periods disappear. Um, we could probably see quite a few of these. These are ones we can't see. So your bones are being broken down to provide uh, energy. So your bones become more brittle. You're more at risk of a stress fracture. And it's not just the bones, it's your muscles as well. So if we're not feeling properly for training and matches, then you're going to be at much higher risk of uh, muscle injuries um, and other kinds of injuries as well. And another long-term one that you're not seeing is this heart health and metabolism. So actually not having enough energy affects your heart health long-term and it affects uh, your metabolism. So that's not good at all. So while you'll see this training, you'll turn up to training. What you might not see to begin with are the subtle impacts that it's having on all these different factors. And what we need is players to turn up with all of these cups full. So both because in sport, we need you to be the best athlete possible, but also for both your short-term and long-term health and well-being, we want happy, healthy players. So we need to make sure that you're eating enough food to fuel your training 
um, and give you enough energy for all of your uh, bodily functional, so fun functioning as well. So if you maybe notice that your mood is low, if you notice that your periods have stopped, uh, maybe you've noticed that something's gone a bit funny with your uh, performance testing, then maybe you need to come and talk to the nutritionist, the physiotherapist or the strength and conditioning coach or the manager um, and uh, see if there's anything that can be done here. Um, remember, you will always turn up to training. So a lot of people would say, yeah, but I go to training. I'm still going to training. But all these other buckets, they will be depleted and you will still manage to come to training, um, which is incredible. So um, if you need help to make sure that you are balancing your energy, um, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on these, that you're not doing extra training beyond what the strength and conditioning and fitness coaches are advising you to do, um, and that your nutrition is bang on, that you're recovering, that you're fueling properly, and that's going to result in the best sports performance.